Northern Virginia, the autocross season is shut down all the way from Thanksgiving until March. And this off season, I just can't wait that long. So I'm taking the plunge and joining the digital world of the sim racer. The intro car in Assetto Corso is a Nabarth, and that sold me. My requirements are a little different because I have two junior racers that will definitely insist on playing. With that in mind, let's get started. Let's build a sim rig for me and the kids. Now I'm a cheap man by nature, so shopping trip one is direct to the junkyard to select our race seat. There are countless options online with full features, lots of straps that cost hundreds of dollars. But here at my local pick and pull, there are also hundreds of options that cost much more originally. I found this full leather eight way adjustable seat out of a Volvo for $31. And as an added bonus, all the motors turned out to work. Now this particular model had a body control module, a computer, between the switch and the seat because modern life is complicated. But at the end of the day, you're dealing with a 12 volt system and simple 12 volt DC motors. A little bit of detective work, some soldering, and you can reverse engineer the whole thing wiring the motors straight to the switches. $20 Amazon power supply, and you're in business. I'd like to tell you this is the first 110 volt AC Volvo chair on the market, but it's not. Thanks to the internet, I know it's not even the first one put into a sim rig. But look at it go, it's nice. And the adjustment that's already built into the chair is gonna make it a lot easier to fit little girls. All right, time to get into the build montage. Obligatory CNC shot, although anybody could do this with a drill press and some dicum. Google it, it helps. But this is YouTube and it's time to show your tools off. In order to get the adjustment that I'm gonna need, I need to move the pedals and the wheels and everything relative to everything. I'm gonna do that with some cheap ball slides that I found on Amazon. These things are ridiculously cheap compared to the name brand stuff. Search for SBR16 or SBR25 if you're interested. It's a real bargain. These mounting brackets are just gonna make it a little bit easier for me to mount to the frame that I plan to build. I drilled and tapped the ends of the shafts so that I could put end stops in place to keep little girls from pushing the track off the rails. I've said it already, but I still can't get over how cheap these recirculating ball slides are. In my day job, I use these things at the six and $700 price point. These things from Amazon, 50 bucks. Aluminum extrusions have become the go-to for building sim rigs, which makes no sense to me. It's not cheap, it's not rigid, and it's not good. I'm using one and a half by one and a half by eighth inch wall square tubing. The material's actually pretty cheap. Ah, but I don't have a welder, I hear you screaming into your cell phone, TV, computer, or whatever you're watching this on. There are good odds that the $700 weld rig I'm using here costs less than the device you're watching this video on. Because I'm the only welder on my block, I haven't had to plow my own driveway in six years. So you should build with whatever you have, and build right now, don't put it off. But I'm just saying, get a welder. You can build it right, you can build it inexpensively, and you can build it quickly. It'll pay for itself in no time. But enough preaching, let's get on to the design of the sim rig. There will be three main frame pieces. This is the top section that the steering wheel, the monitor, and the computer will mount to. It slides on top of a midsection that contains the pedals. All of this will sit on top of a base section that the chair attaches to. Being able to slide these three sections relative to each other gives a ton of options for seating positions. For the actual geometry you want in a sim rig, I found Rico Motec a valuable resource. The relative position of your feet on the pedals to your butt on the seat to your shoulders to your arms on the wheel are all explained in great detail with actual numbers and angles. And if none of what I said has made much sense so far, Hopefully this quick assembly montage will clear it right up for you. The midsection or pedal box is riding on the big SBR 35 rails and the top on smaller SBR 18s, I believe. The slides are locked into position with Desteco style clamps bolted to the frame. It allows you to lock out either the slides in any position and take the abuse of a sim rig. And that's really all there is to it on the base structure. You can see it here all together 
We still got a few more pieces to add, but I'm worn out, so it's time to enlist some child labor. We need a few final details like this computer tray and some mounting for some caster wheels on the base frame. Ah! <laughs> what happened? Yeah. You need some squirted over there. And voila. That's the basic idea of it anyway. Slide it up for the little one. Put it in the middle for a bigger one. And put it all the way out for the biggest one. Let's get this thing broken down and off to powder coat. My girls are five and nine years old and they're giant shop rats. Nothing makes me happier. Get your kids in the shop, it's wonderful. And you gotta find it. Good job. With that, it was time to take the pieces off to the professionals at Lynchburg Powder Coating in order to get it powder coated for a nice smooth finish. Powder coat's going to be way more durable than any rattle can job and a heck of a lot easier, so I just paid. Now, it's time to talk about liveries. The Alitalia livery has been used on countless Fiats and Abarths, including this 131 World Rally Champion. I was able to find a guy in Australia that could actually sell me all the stickers I needed to turn my sim rig into an Alitalia Abarth sim rig. So let's button it up and get ready for an amateur lit YouTube reveal. made it this far thanks for watching hope you consider liking clicking subscribing whatever you're supposed to do this one wasn't really meant as a step-by-step -step guide but hopefully gives you some ideas and inspirations to start your own build thanks for watching